my name's Sonia and I'm from Scottish Graham, which is a food and drink website that my husband and I started around four years ago. We've been putting up Scottish food and drink recipes and we decided it's finally time for us to turn them into videos and put them on a YouTube channel. So welcome to the first Scottish Graham YouTube video. Today we're going to be making a recipe called Petticoat Tail Shortbread. This is one of the easiest recipes that you can make. It is called petticoat tails because of the way that you bake it in a round and it kind of looks like a petticoat that someone's thrown on the ground. This type of shortbread was first made popular by Mary Queen of Scots. So although shortbread is not a Scottish invention as such, it is something that people really associate with the country and in particular this kind of shortbread. The other thing is that shortbread traditionally has a 3 to 1 ratio. That means we use three parts of the flour, two parts of the butter, and one part sugar. And that's what makes using all of the same type of ingredient so much easier as well. Normally when we do our recipes, we try and measure things out in with a scale using grams because that's what gives you a more accurate end result. But this time we are making an exception and we have used cups. I have measured out two cups of the flour, one cup of the butter, and half a cup of the sugar if you're using a different tin then you could always adjust those rate that if you need to that's a good thing about this recipe is that you just have to stick to the same ratio no matter how much or little you want to make so the first thing that we're going to do is beat the butter now i have used unsalted butter this time mainly because that's what we had in the fridge <laughs> but you can use salted butter as well and actually the salt does help to bring out a bit of the flavor of the shortbread what i will probably do is add a sneaky fourth ingredient this time around and just put a pinch of salt in so it's up to you which of those things you want to do the butter should be room temperature and i'm going to be beating it with an electric hand beater you can do this in a stand mixer but you actually don't want to overbeat any of the ingredients. So I tend to use um, a hand mixer because I feel like I've got a bit more control with it. So let's start adding our ingredients. Put the butter in the bowl and we'll take our beater or whisk, whatever you're using. So now I'm going to put my pinch of salt in. If you are using salted butter, then you don't need to do this. And obviously, it's just easier to do that in the first place. So a little bit of that. Then we can add the sugar in as well. So it's all creamed in like that. We add the sugar. And just beat it in again. You want the sugar to dissolve into the butter, basically. So I've used a caster sugar because it's a finer sugar which means that hopefully it'll dissolve into the butter better. So we've just added the flour which is the last ingredient and we're now going to mix it all together. I'm going to start this off with a wooden spoon but generally you need to get in there a bit with your hands as well. Don't worry if the mixture is really crumbly because you're going to press it down quite firmly into the tin anyway. So that's probably about as much as it's going to come together with the wooden spoon. So now it's time to get my hands dirty. What you want to do is make sure your hands are all clean, your bench is all clean, because you potentially want to put it out and give it a bit of a knead. I'm going to see how it goes, and I might just put it straight into the tin and press it in that way. So clean everything off that. So as you can see, it's still quite crumbly. But as long as you're getting all those ingredients mixed in together, so you don't have any kind of big clumps of flour or big clumps of butter and sugar, that's okay because that's where you can just push it down into the tin. The other thing you can do if you feel like it is really, really crumbly is add a couple of drops of water, or you can always just add a little bit more butter, although that's harder to do. You'll kind of just need to almost melt it in your fingers and then work it in. So crumbly shortbread actually is good because it means that it's got plenty of butter in it, which is where the name comes from. So shorts actually another, is like a baking description for something that's got a really crumbly texture. So that's why you have shortbread and you have short crust pastry as well. 
So it's just coming together pretty well. My hands will be sort of melting the butter in a bit more. But I think I'm probably going to leave it like that and just push it down into the tin and get it to come together in the tin. Now, if your mixture is a lot more wet, then you can tip it all out on the on whatever surface you've got and give it a bit of a knead or like a dough. But actually, I think that is looking pretty good. And it is coming together when I squeeze it together with my hands, which is the main thing. So it is coming together when I do that. So as you can see, it's totally sticking to my fingers, but that's okay. I'm going to get as much off as I can, and we will tip it into our cake tin. I haven't greased the cake tin, and that's because it tends to not really need it because there's so much butter in the recipe itself. Um, if you're worried about it, of course you can. It just means you're adding a little bit more butter around the edges of the shortbread. So put it all in. Build some, obviously. Okay. And then you're just going to continue pushing it down into the tin. So what I'm going to do is try and make sure it's fairly even, evenly spread out across the tin. And then I'll start really pushing it down with my fingers. I'm going to grab a large spoon in a minute, like a dessert spoon, and I'll smooth the top over. But what I want to do is make sure that there are definitely no kind of ear pockets or anything in here. And keep trying to get it off my hands as well. So as you can see, it is kind of starting to come together a bit more. So I've got a few things to help me finish off this recipe. I've got a large spoon, which I'm going to use to smooth down the shortbread. And as you can see, it instantly makes it way smoother on the top. So if you were worried about it being too crumbly, this should hopefully assure you that it'll be fine. So shortbread is something that we always have at Christmas time in my family. Uh, there was always a tin of homemade shortbread floating around that either my mom or my grandma or my auntie had made. It's such an easy thing to do, but it's just so nice to have like homemade shortbread rather than the tin stuff. Not to say that there are not some lovely tins, especially Scottish ones, but we're going for the homemade <laughs> look this time. Right, okay, I've done it about as smooth as I can. I'd probably take a bit more time if I wasn't recording myself. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna score it now, just lightly, uh, because you don't wanna kind of have any big tears in the dough, but this means that you know where you're going to cut it afterwards. I mean, if all of these lines completely disappear in the baking process, that's okay. Um, so here we go. This is where you can kind of do what you like as well. Um, one thing that I do like to do is I put take my thumb and I just put quite a big indent in the shortbread. So around the outside, because I think this makes it look a bit more like a petticoat tail. Um, what you can do so I'm doing about three thumbs to pieces, and I've got about eight pieces in here. What you can do is use a tart tin that already has that around the edge, and that will give you the, um, I don't know what you call it, the little bits around the edge. That'll give you that, that impression. However, just make sure that whatever tin that you're using you use a loose bottomed tin so that you can get the shortbread out. So this one actually pushes up through the bottom or um, you can use a, a tin that um, has the kind of clip on the side like a cheesecake tin. Either way, you just want to make sure that you can get it out easily. So if you're using a tart tin, you can get the ones with a loose bottomed tart tin as well. Um, so I'm just going around pushing my thumb in making those indents now they will lose some of their definition while they're baking as well so don't be afraid to push down quite a lot uh, okay i think that is pretty decent and i'm also going to put a couple of indents with the fork 
Now, when you take it out of the oven, you can basically do all of this again because the shortbread is so soft that you will lose some of those and then you, you can just stick the fork in where you've seen that you've done it before. At this point, if you want to, you can chill the dough in the fridge for a while. I would say maybe for around 30 minutes. This helps us to really keep this design that we have put into it. Um, I'm not so worried about it though, because it's not like it's spreading anywhere. If you were going to be making shortbread that you'd cut into individual biscuits, you would definitely be going to chill it in the fridge for a while and on a tray as well. So we don't have to worry about that so much. Um, we just want to make sure that we get a little bit of that definition on top. I'm going to put the temperature of the oven at about 160 degrees Celsius. And then I'll probably keep an eye on it from about 40 minutes anywhere up to an hour. The reason for that is that different ovens, different temperatures, even though they all obviously have the measurement. And we have just recently moved to this house in the Isle of Skye. I've not done a lot of baking in the oven. So we're going to see how it goes today. Uh, I'll be looking for a light golden brown color starting to form on the top, but not too much because otherwise the biscuit will be overdone. So I'm just going to take the shortbread out of the oven now. It's been about 40 minutes and I think it's done already because this oven seems to run a bit hotter than our last one did. I'm going to work pretty quickly to make the um, cuts along where I did the scoring before we put it into the oven because the shortbread is still really soft when you first take it out of the oven. So it's the perfect time to do that. Then we can leave it to cool in the tin before we take it out again later. So the shortbread has gone a golden color on the top and it's just starting to go a bit golden brown around the edges. So that's about when you want to take it out, maybe even slightly earlier. And I'm going to take the knife and I'm just going to run it gently along where I previously scored the shortbread while it's still nice and hot from the oven. And that's going to stop it from cracking too much. You just want to make sure you're cutting all the way through and then we can also redo those fork marks that we did if we want to but I think this look okay so I'm probably going to leave it this time around it's definitely still got the definition around the edge to make it look like petticoat tails so there we go that is the finished shortbread that I've cut so I'm now going to leave this in the tin and let it cool completely before I pop the bottom of the tin out and we can take it out and enjoy it. So the shortbread has completely cooled in the tin now, so we can take it out. This tin just kind of pops up from the bottom. It can be a little bit difficult to do. Um, so I'll just try and get out like this. You can see that the definition has really stayed in place, which is nice. So there is the finished shortbread. Now we do have it on a base as well. So what I'm going to do is just use a butter knife to try and pop off the first slice. And then once you've done that, the rest of them should come away pretty easily. As you can see, these are pretty thick and big pieces of shortbread, but that means plenty more to enjoy. Um, what I would say is you can cut it a little bit smaller if you want to and like slightly small pieces, but to be honest, no one's ever complained. So we'll go with it. Um, I'm going to put it all on a plate and enjoy it with a cup of tea. Thanks very much for following along today. You can find the full recipe on our website, scottishgram.com and please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more Scottish food and drink recipes. Now's the best bit. I get to try it. Mm -hmm.